Okay, so today I've got a special treat. A nice big hobo spider. So today we're going to be, whoa, I just caught that fly. <laughs> Today we're going to be seeing if spiders get dizzy. If you've ever watched Spider-Man, you may have had the question, does Spider-Man ever get dizzy hanging upside down like that? And when a spider weaves a web and is hanging upside down and twirling in the air, does it ever get dizzy? So I made a makeshift turntable here, and I'm going to be spinning it around in circles to see if it actually gets dizzy. Okay, so I've got my hobo spider here. I'm a little bit nervous to do this experiment using a hobo spider because I've read conflicting information online. In fact, they're not quite sure how venomous the hobo spider is. Some scientists have said that nearly all bites that have previously been attributed to a brown recluse spider were actually a hobo spider. And then there are some scientists that say that the hobo spider bite actually isn't that bad and doesn't cause any necrosis of the skin, doesn't cause any lesions, and actually doesn't even hurt that bad. So today I'm going to be letting it bite me and seeing if my arm falls off. Just kidding, that's a different channel. Okay, so the hard part here is going to be getting the spider out from under the cup and under my glass case. So first, let's try to remove the paper. These guys are really fast. They can move around three feet per second. Oh man. I feel like it can almost push the cup over. Here we go. Oh, I'm so nervous, okay. Three feet per second, that's pretty fast. Here we go. I'm hoping that it'll just stay still and I'll stick this over it, but let's see. Oh, oh, we got it. Okay, it's in. Got it. So the way that I'm going to be testing if it gets dizzy or not is I'm going to spin it really fast and then I'm going to see if it's able to make straight lines or if it makes curved lines. Because when a normal person gets dizzy, it's really hard to walk in a straight line. You usually start to go straight and then you curve. So my goal is to try to get the spider to run and see if it runs in a straight line or curves. This is just a check to see how it walks around when it's not dizzy. So it looks like no matter what, it always hangs out towards the walls of the glass. That's where it wants to be because it feels like it's safe in the corner there. And it pretty much sticks towards there. As soon as I move the glass, it instantly goes towards the edge. Pretty fast too. But now let's see what happens when we spin it. Can it get dizzy? And if it gets dizzy, will it still be able to detect where these corners are and quickly move to the corners? Well, let's check it out and see. Okay, let's get it spinning. Make sure we're centered and go. Okay, now let's see how it moves. Ooh. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it's going in circles or anything. Actually, it is going in circles because it's in a round thing, but. So as far as I can tell, it doesn't look that dizzy. Okay, so why didn't the spider get dizzy? Well, in order to answer that, we have to understand why we get dizzy. We get dizzy because in our inner ear, we have these tubes filled with liquid. We have three of these tubes in our inner ear and they're all pointing different directions. And in these tubes, there's liquid and hairs. 
And when the liquid flows, it bends these hairs and these hairs are attached to nerves. So it lets our brain know that we're moving because the fluid moves and then it bends those hairs and that tells our brain we're moving or we change direction. So that's why when you lie down, your brain knows that you're facing down because the fluid moved a little bit through those tubes and depending on which way it bent, that's how your body knows which way you went or which way you laid down. And even though that liquid helps us keep our balance and helps us know which way is down, it also is the thing that makes us dizzy. Because when we spin really fast, that fluid kind of sloshes against the sides of those tubes. And after a while, once that fluid becomes stable, that's when it seems like you stop moving, but then it seems like the world around you is spinning. So once that fluid is stable, you feel like you're standing still and the world around you is spinning. But then when you stop, that fluid continues to move through your inner ear and it bends those hairs so your body still thinks you're moving even though you stop because that fluid is still moving. And after a while, that fluid kind of stops sloshing around in your ear and eventually your hairs in there become stable and you don't feel dizzy anymore. But for something like a spider, it doesn't have that inner ear sensation and so it probably doesn't feel dizzy in any way like we feel dizzy. Spiders sense their environment mostly through hairs on the outside of their body. They use those hairs to sense movement in their web, kind of like when the spider caught the fly in the first of my video. It sensed some movement and it caught some movement with its eyes and then it quickly lunged and grabbed that fly. So I would assume the way to bewilder a spider is to make all of those hairs move all at once and it doesn't really know what's moving and what isn't. But for just spinning it around in a circle, it doesn't seem like it affects it at all because it's not like it changes the direction of those hairs because it doesn't have fluid to bend it due to the centrifugal force of it spinning around. So even though it was really hard to tell with this experiment to know if the spider was dizzy, I couldn't really tell a difference between whether we spun the spider or didn't spin it, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that a spider doesn't get dizzy by spinning. Since this spider did so well doing this turntable experiment, I've decided to turn it loose into the environment. In fact, that's better for this guy because my wife instructed me if during the transfer or if anything went wrong during this experiment, I was to burn down the entire house. So I'm glad the spider didn't get loose. So let's go let it go now. Okay, here we go. There it goes. <laughs> okay, good luck spider. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out and head over to theactionlab.com to check out my new subscription box where you can do experiments similar to the ones that you do on my channel. It'll be shipped out quarterly. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.